Welcome back to the Spectre Creative Channel. I'm your host, Scott Toy Guru Nightlick. I'm a longtime toy maker of 25 years in the toy industry, but I'm also a toy collector, hence my personal office is filled to the brim with toys, to the point that my wife really won't come into my office. She finds it overwhelming, what can I say? And almost every shelf in my office, at some point, somewhere, has a Simpsons toy on it. Why is this? Well, one, they're really funny, and they work so well with other toys to just kind of add that humorous sort of uh, punctuation, shall we say, to an action figure shelf. And yeah, there pretty much isn't a shelf in my office that doesn't have a Simpsons toy on it in some fashion. And, you know, it brings me a smile every time I look at that shelf, because I see a Simpsons character that I really like, and, you know, hey, that's what action figures are all about for collectors, is making us happy and smile. So, if you're like me, you are probably a fan of The Simpsons at some point in time. I mean, what, there's been like 248 seasons at this point? Now, I tend to be a fan of the earlier years of The Simpsons, let's say before it kind of jumped the shark and, well, sort of outdid itself. For me, that moment tends to be when the real Seymour Skinner entered the show and was then carted off and never spoken about again. But, hey, we all have those moments. Either way, the brand itself has become highly collectible. I mean, it's been around for 30 years. You would expect that for anything. It has a lot of things that work really well for consumer products. It has a huge cast of characters that creates a lot of variety on shelf. And even the main character has a lot of different variants, you know, like Hoth Luke and Bespin Luke. Plus, there are characters that are kind of like superheroes, or at least have superhero outfits. And there are plenty of ways that The Simpsons have been turned into action figures with gimmicks over the years. In fact, there have been a lot of Simpson action figure lines. And each one has been a little different. But one of the unique things about the brand is no matter who's doing the toys, they have struggled at retail. There has always, they really haven't, they've been evergreen, but only in the sense that they've jumped from company to company every few years. There hasn't been one company producing them for 30 years. The way you get, you know, something like Hasbro with Star Wars, where, you know, they've consistently made Star Wars figures for 30 years. Now, some of the figures don't have articulation, and some of them are in other play patterns like construction. What I want to focus on are the action figure collectibles and why they've had trouble in this category. Despite the fact that they've been on shelf consistently, they have jumped around to more toy companies than almost any other license. And why is that? especially as we are now on the verge of getting a new Simpsons line, now from Super 7, which is like the fifth or sixth, seventh toy company to make Simpsons action figures. So what's with this struggle? Why is it that one company can't succeed with the Simpsons and the line keeps jumping around? And now I give you the eternal struggle. <laughs> Relax, fit my Aunt Fanny. Stupid. All right, well, let's start with a trip through time and take a look at the very first Simpsons action figure line, which was from a company that I actually worked for. Well, I've worked for a lot of toy companies, but in this case, Mattel, the company I worked for the longest. So they were the first company to tackle the Simpsons in action figure form, and you could get pretty much the whole main cast, the family, Bart in different variants, and Nelson Muntz. Okay, we'll get to that in a moment. Now, this was sort of before Homer became the real star of the show. Those of us who were around in the early 90s, when The Simpsons first came out, well, actually the late 80s, early 90s, this was the age of Bart. This was when Bart was seen as the star of the show, and everyone had a Bart Simpson t-shirt. I remember begging my parents for one, and this shirt in particular got banned from a bunch of schools because Bart was saying that he was proud of being an underachiever, and this was seen as a negative influence on kids. Hey, what can you say? No one wants to look up to someone who wants to underachieve, especially if you're in elementary school. Well, as the age of Bart, no wonder that the line was full of Bart Simpson figures and variants. He was the main star of the line. Now, there was a gimmick for the line, which was interchangeable word balloons, which Makes sense, since it was an animated talking show, and there really wasn't that much action. I mean, yeah, Bart jumped over a, a gorge on a skateboard, but it wasn't an action show the way something like, you know, Lion-O versus Mumra. There wasn't this inert conflict of good guy versus bad guy that is needed for action figure play. That's why you see this show up in so many action figure lines. But Mattel sort of thought they could do this with the line by emphasizing the conflict between Bart and his arch enemy, Nelson Muntz. 
and that's why you got so many variants of Bart and why Nelson shows up as the one non-family member in the line, because this was meant to be the conflict, the He-Man versus Skeletor, Barbie versus Midge. This looked good on paper as far as creating a line around an inherent conflict, you know, good versus evil, battle in a box, as it's called in the industry, but sales didn't really work in that sense, and the Nelson-Bart conflict wasn't enough to sell a line. So next up in the rotation was Playmates. Now this is the crown jewel of Simpsons lines, only because it lasted the longest and it gave us the most number of characters. This line was called The World of Springfield, as opposed to The Simpsons, and yeah, it had virtually everyone who was on the show in the years that it at least came out, if you will, because it just kept getting bigger and bigger. Of course, we had our token Bart variants, but it didn't focus on Bart. It had the world of Springfield, as promised. So you had secondary characters, you had tertiary characters, and you had fourth or fifth tier characters who didn't even actually have a name on the series, i.e. Sarcastic Man. Did he ever get a name? I don't know. And all the characters were virtually in scale to each other. There were two sizes, kids and adults. And you even had celebrity voiceover series where, you know, Phil Hartman or Phil Hartman got the voice. In fact, when they announced the Hank Scorpio figure in this series, my best friends Brian and Greg and I had a bet over what accessories Hank Scorpio was going to come with. And whoever got closest was going to have to buy the other two people a Hank Scorpio. And I think we all guessed the, the uh, flamethrower, but... Uh, I think we thought there'd be like a jacket and uh, some some uh, pl uh, the Super Bowl uh, <laughs> newspaper headline for some reason. I don't know. We thought that was going to come with him, and it didn't. So I don't think anyone really won. We all were off a little bit. All right. So what else came with this line besides figures? Well, you had mini environments. This was what was sold on the mid-shelf. You need to have a planogram, so you can't just have basic skews. And the play sets were sort of a two-wall zones or rooms. They only had, you know, a back wall and a side wall, and they interacted with the figures through a chip that was embedded in all of their feet. And by clicking the figure and the chip into the playset, it would trigger sounds specific to that character. Now, not every figure worked on every playset, and the back of the box usually told you who worked on that particular playset. So if you stuck, say, Marge in the nuclear power plant, it wouldn't work. But if you stuck her in the living room, you would get Marge sounds. So, it, you know, it was a cool idea, and it was definitely a gimmick. And really, it was a way to expand the line and give a play pattern and give some kind of reason for being for these figures, because they can now interact with the environments. And all of the environments came with even more obscure figures. So characters that didn't make the main line as single releases would wind up getting released at, with a playset, with a two-walled playset. So, yes, if you wanted Jasper, you had to buy the Retirement Castle. And while this was really great, the coolest one of all, their sort of their Castle Grayskull, their, their uh, Cat's Lair, their Bat Cave was the Main Street, which interacted with almost every figure and came with two figures, the uh, Pimply Teen and Crazy Old Man. So... If you had this set, you had, you know, sort of like the quintessential Simpsons playset. Another interesting playset was the uh, Moe's Bar, which was never sold in toy stores because selling alcohol in toy stores, not good idea. So it was exclusive to GameStop. And I definitely picked this one up, and I've had a lot of fun with it over the years as a uh, mashup between Moe's Tavern and the Star Wars Cantina. All right, so absolutely a great line, and why didn't it last? Well, there were a few issues with it, and one was the variants. Yes, it's great to get variants of main characters. Everyone likes that. But the problem is, getting the original version of the characters became really hard. They weren't released after Wave 1. No one wants to start their collection with Stonecutter Homer. I mean, I do have Stonecutter Homer, but no one wants to start there. It's why in DCU we had the All-Star figures. It was a way to get Batman and Superman constantly on shelf to bring in new collectors or the way Hasbro does the Archive series for Black Series. It's a way to get those main characters out there again for people who miss them or new collectors in. What I personally would have done is I would have re-released Homer with different facial expressions. I thought that would have been a great way to keep him on shelf and just a little bit different. But, alas, the only Homer on a basic card in his traditional look had a forward smile and was only released in Wave 1. Now, this wasn't the only trip-up that the line had. There were a few other issues, such as the fact that 
while the kids and the adults had two different scales throughout 95% of the line, at the very end, someone somewhere made the decision to make the kids more in scale as they should be and shrunk them. So Database came out way smaller than all the other kids. Yeah, it was true to scale to the show, but it threw him off for every other kid figure released in the line. Eh, that was kind of weird. The other issue was Evil Homer. When he was released, or at least his name was mentioned as coming out, we were so excited. I was so excited. We, I, It was awesome. We were going to get an Evil Homer figure. I am Evil Homer. I am Evil Homer. I am Evil Homer. And that was the Evil Homer we thought we were getting. Instead, we got this. And to me, as a collector, this was before I went into the toy industry, this was to me a sign that the people brand managing the line didn't understand the IP. That's not Evil Homer. Okay, so despite the fact that we didn't get our maraca-shaking Evil Homer from Playmates, we did get it from McFarlane Toys, but McFarlane's take on The Simpsons was less action figures and more statues. They focused on iconic moments and really leaned heavily into the uh, Treehouse of Horrors episodes, the Halloween specials, because that's kind of what McFarlane does is monsters and creatures. So yeah, Bart as a giant spider was definitely something they were excited to do. So next up on that was NECA. See how the license keeps bouncing back and forth at this point? And NECA focused their line on the 25th anniversary of The Simpsons, and while it did include the main characters, who had already been done by Playmates, their focus was really on the guest stars, and they did a whole series of guest star figures. Now, this was great because for anyone who had wanted a Weird Al Yankovic action figure, now you could finally get one, and that was awesome. And you could other get other characters like Stan Lee, because every toy line ever needs a Stanley action figure. I think that's a definitive fact that we can all agree must happen. Okay, well, maybe not every line should have had a Stanley. But why is it then that the Simpsons line keeps batting back and forth like a tennis ball and can't stay with one company? And it really is because... While The Simpsons has aspirational characters and even superhero-esque characters, it's really just about collecting. And that works for kids in a sense, but not in an action figure line. Kids like collecting marbles and rocks and things like that. For an action figure line, they need doinky doink play, which involves heroes and villains. And while you have Bart versus Nelson or, you know, Homer versus Frank Grimes, that's not really the arch enemy pattern of something like, say, Batman versus the Joker, which works so well. And that inherent conflict is needed to sell action figures to kids. To collectors alone, they're not enough to support a retail line, which is probably why it's exciting that Super 7 has now taken the line over, and it's the most collector-friendly of any Simpsons line. It's not available at retail, and it comes with more interchangeable parts and accessories than any line ever. So, while we may already have an outer space Homer, we're now getting him with different facial expressions. Ooh, see? Someone's doing that. And tons and tons of accessories. So, this is where The Simpsons probably belongs, in a collector-only line, not at retail. Because kids don't really support lines that don't have conflict in them. And that's why The Simpsons has had trouble at retail. Good luck, Super 7. I'm excited for what you got. Oh, won't somebody please think of the children? Well, despite the children not being able to get Simpson toys, there's a bright future there. If you like this video, please do share it with others, subscribe to the channel, like it, ring the bell, it all helps the algorithm. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll answer them right away. Thanks for watching.